Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now going to answer question number two from the June 2024 International A-Level Mechanics M1 paper from Edexcel International A-Levels. And here we have a question about vector, about forces. So it says two forces P and Q act on a particle. So P has a magnitude of 10 newtons and acts due west. And Q has a magnitude of 8 newtons, act on a bearing of 300 and 30 degrees. Given that F is equal to P plus Q, find the magnitude of F. So basically you have a force acting due west. So we should know our compass directions and our bearings for this type of question. So we have north, and we have east, and we have south, and we have west. North, east, south, and west. So P is acting due west, so P is acting in this direction, and Q is acting on a bearing of 330 degrees. Okay, so a bearing, bearings are always measured from the north line and always clockwise. So 330 degrees, you have to go this way, so you're going through 90, 180, 270, and then 330. So it'd be somewhere in this direction over here. Okay, the force would be somewhere in this direction over here. Okay, so that would be your force Q. And your force P would be acting in this direction over here. Towards the west. Okay. And Q would be um, 8 newtons. And, and P would be 10 newtons acting towards the west. And this is 270 degrees. 90 plus 90 plus another 90. This is 330 degrees. Okay, so this angle is 330 all the way around. So the difference between them is going to be 60 degrees. So that's going to be 60 degrees, the angle between those two forces. All right? So the resultant force is going to act somewhere between them. So let me just take this and put it down here. So Okay, so the resultant force is going to be acting somewhere between them. Okay, so the resultant force, let me put it in a different color. Is going to act somewhere in this direction here. It will obviously be closer to the 10 newtons than the 8 newtons. It's a bigger force. So F is going to act somewhere in this direction over here. And we have to find the magnitude of F. Now there's a number of ways we can go about doing them. Um, one of them is to draw a vector diagram. Okay, and then work out the resultant force. If you have two forces acting, then the resultant can be found by drawing a vector diagram. Okay, sometimes it's called, um, anyway, I'll Destroy it first. So here you have 10 newtons acting in this direction. And then you have 8 newtons acting in this, this direction. 60 degrees. Okay. This angle is 60 degrees here. Okay. So this is going to be your force P, which is 10 newtons. And this is going to be your force Q, which is 8 newtons. And the angle here is 60 degrees. This angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so the angle over here would be 60 degrees. This angle is 60 degrees, which means the angle on this side is 120. So the resultant force is found by joining together where you started to where you finished. So we started here and we finished there. And that would be the resultant force. So this here is going to be our force, which they told us to call F. So F is equal to P plus Q. This is P and this is Q. So F is the resultant of P plus Q. So how do you find F? Well, in this diagram, we can use the cosine rule. We know the cosine rule is the, the A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. So these are two sides, and this is the angle between those two sides. And that's the side, obviously the angle that you know, that you're trying to find. So in this case, we can say F is equal to, using the cosine rule, the square root of B squared plus C squared, which is 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times the cosine of, now this is the angle between them, this angle here is 120. That's 60, this is 120, that's what we're looking for, and that will give us our force. So we have the square root of 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 
times 8 times the cosine of 120 degrees. And that gives us 2 times root 61, 2 times root 61, which is equal to 15.620, 15.620. So you can say 15.6 newtons. So you can leave your answer like this. You can leave your answer like that. Both of them are acceptable. All right, so that's newtons. So there we have the answer. Um, well, the magnitude of F. We don't have to put the newtons because it's really described as being newtons. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So that's the magnitude of F, and there we have the answer for part. Oh, that's that's the answer. That's the answer. So that's enough for you to to get the full marks. That's fine. But there's also an alternative method which I'm going to show you. And that is when you take these forces and you resolve them um, horizontally and um, vertically. So I've got let's put this like that. So you've got your force P and you've got your force Q. Right? So this is P and this is Q. This is 10 newtons. And this is 8 newtons. Okay, now if I resolve the forces horizontally, so I want to find the horizontal component of F, and vertically, so I want, to, I want to find the vertical component of F. The vertical component of F, then I can find what the result is for F, and I can get my answer. So I need to resolve the forces. So remember, this angle here is 60 degrees. And if this force can be resolved, So this 8 Newton's force can be resolved vertically. Okay. And also it can be resolved horizontally. Okay. Should have done that for this as well. Okay. So the horizontal component of this force and the vertical component of this force. Let me use the 10 Newton's up. So for this force here, the horizontal component is going to be, um, this is 8, remember 8 is here, this is 8, times, you're going into the angle, if you ever you resolve a force, going into the angle, you use cosine. 8 times cosine of 60, okay, this is 8 cosine 60 in this direction, and up here will be 8 times, sine of 60. Why? Because you're going, resolving in the direction away from the angle. Going away from the angle, use sine. Into the angle, use cosine. You can think of, this is like parallel to that. So it's the opposite side of this triangle. So use cosine. And this is like the adjacent side. Okay, to this triangle, it's like the adjacent side. So you use cosine. Okay, so if we resolve horizontally, then you're going to have minus 8 cosine 60. That's FH. Okay, so that's FH. That's the only force acting that direction. And if I resolve vertically, I'm going to have 8 sine 60 plus, okay, sorry, this is minus 8 cosine 60 minus 10. Okay, so Horizontally, you have minus 10 and minus 8 cosine 60. Vertically, you have 8 sine 60 only. Okay, so simplifying this a little bit, minus 8 times cosine 60 is minus 8 times a half. So it's minus 4, minus 10. That's going to be negative 14 newtons acting in that direction. And this is going to be root 3 over 2 times 8, which is going to give you 4 root 3 in that direction. Okay, so you basically have these two forces acting, and you can resolve them horizontally and vertically. So if you think about it, you have um, the horizontal component is negative 14, the vertical component is 4 root 3. Okay, and the resultant force between them is going to be like that. Okay, so this is the horizontal component, FH, which is, four, is we'll put the magnitude, 14. And this is the vertical component of V, which is 4 root 3. 
So the resultant force, F, is going to be by Pythagoras the square root of 4 root 3 squared plus 14 squared. Okay, the minus sign is what matter now. So the magnitude of V is going to be equal to the square root of, um, in brackets, 4 root 3 squared. squared minus or oh sorry plus 14 squared which gives you exactly the same answer 2 root 61 2 times the square root of 61 which is 15.6 and there we have the answer the magnitude of the force v is 15.6 newtons so there's two different ways i've shown you okay um one is by making a uh, you know a vector diagram and then finding the resultant force using the cosine rule the other way is to find the horizontal component and then the vertical component of the forces acting and then, you know, finding by Pythagoras. Now, this way works if you have um, an, a resultant force from two forces acting. So you all, all together you end up with three forces. So you can make a triangle out of it straight away. So that won't work in every case. That works in those cases where you can make a triangle, right? But if there's, for example, four forces or five forces acting, then you have to do exactly what we did here. We have to resolve the forces, all the forces acting horizontally, all of them acting vertically, and then take the horizontal component of all the forces and the vertical component of all the forces, and then use Pythagoras' theorem to find the resultant force. So sometimes, you know, you can't do this. Here you can use in every case, right? So it's good to know both of these ways. So that answers question number two from the June 2024 paper, a mechanics M1 paper from K Edexcel. If you'd like to see other questions from this paper, click on the link that will appear over here at the end of the video. If you want to, if you would like to see questions on this topic of uh, forces, resultant forces and vectors, you can click on the link over here. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link and the video at the top here will show you um, how to use my channel effectively. Thank you for watching and see you soon.